Welcome to this video in which we will compute the complex exponential Fourier series coefficients of the square wave that I've drawn here. A link to a more complex example of computing Fourier series coefficients in which we look at a square wave with the period t, amplitude a, and duty cycle d, all of which can be adjusted, is on the screen. So let's get started. The first thing that we want to do is identify the fundamental period t0. So you can see I have the square wave. Uh, it starts at 0 and then goes until it gets to time 2 and repeats itself. And if you want to look at a different interval, you can think of starting at time 1 and it goes to time 3 and repeats itself. But in any case, the fundamental period is 2. We also, at some point, will need to know omega 0, which is equal to 2 pi over t 0. So in this case, omega 0 is equal to pi. c 0, which is actually just the average of the waveform, so I can write it as 1 over 2, that's t 0, times the integral over one period of the waveform of x of t. I'll integrate from 0 to 2 on this picture. I'll start at 0 and go to 2 and integrate the waveform, basically finding the area under this block and the signed area under this block. And so uh, I can write this then as 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1. That's getting this first block here. And between 0 and 1, x of t is 1 plus the integral from 1 to 2, that's basically this block, uh, between 1 and 2, x of t is minus 1 dt. And so if I work that out, and this 1 half should be in front of everything, so if I work that out, I have 1 half times, uh, working the first integral out here, I get 1, working the second integral out, I get negative 1, so it's going to be 0, which is what you would expect. Let's now compute c sub k for the case where k is not equal to 0. So you remember that c sub k is 1 over t 0, which in our case is 2. So we have 1 over 2, the integral from 0 to 2. x of t e to the minus j k omega 0 t dt. You'll remember that omega 0 is pi, so I'll start using that in just a minute. Because x has a value of 1 between t equals 0 to 1, and a value of negative 1 between t going from 1 to 2, I'll break this integral into two separate integrals. The integral from 0 to 1 of 1 times e to the minus j k pi t dt, plus the integral from 1 to 2 of negative 1 e to the minus j k pi t dt. Now we need to work both integrals. We'll start with the first one. Since we're multiplying by 1, we can just cross it out. And then we find that we're integrating an exponential. And to integrate the exponential, we end up with 1 over the constant times the exponential terms evaluated at the limits. So when we do that, we get 1 over minus j k pi e to the minus j k pi t evaluated at or from 0 to 1. So to do the evaluation, we plug the 1 in for t, and we get e to the minus j k pi. We then plug the 0 in for t, and we get e to the minus j k pi 0 which evaluates to 1. So putting it all together, we end up with 1 over minus j k pi times e to the minus j k pi minus 1. And you're saying, all right, that was great fun. We're done. Well, we are sort of done, but it turns out that there's a lot more we can figure out about this. However, before we do that, we need to go back and work the second term. 
This is the second integral. Again, we have the constant minus jk pi. So we put 1 over minus jk pi times minus e to the minus jk pi t evaluated from 1 to 2. So if we evaluate, or if we plug in 2 for t, we get e to the minus jk 2 pi. If we plug in 1 for t, we get e to the minus jk pi. And then taking into account the fact that the negative numbers, uh, the negative 1 and the negative j pi or jk pi, uh, those negative signs cancel, we end up with 1 over jk pi times e to the minus jk2 pi minus e to the minus jk pi. Okay, so at this point we've worked the integrals and we could stop here, but if we stop here we're going to miss some of the more interesting bits associated with this particular set of Fourier series coefficients. So let's look at this term e to the minus jk2 pi. k is always an integer. It may be positive or negative, but it's always an integer. Using Euler's formula, the complex exponential can be written as cosine of k2 pi minus j sine of k2 pi. And the cosine of an integer multiple of 2 pi is equal to 1. Similarly, I have the sine of an integer multiple of 2 pi, and the sine of an integer multiple of 2 pi is 0. So this expression can be written as 1 over jk pi times 1 minus e to the minus jk pi. We can use Euler's formula to write the second exponential in terms of cosines and sines. And when we do that, we get uh, that it's cosine of k pi minus j sine of k pi. And so when we think about this, any time that we have the sine of an integer number times pi, that's 0. The cosine is a bit trickier. When k is even, so 0, 2, 4, minus 2, minus 4, so on, the cosine of 0 or 2 pi or 4 pi will be 1. So when k is even, the cosine is 1. When k is odd, so you have pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, minus pi, minus 3 pi, etc., the cosine will be negative 1. So whenever k is odd, the cosine is negative 1. So the complex exponential is either 1 or minus 1, and I'm subtracting 1 or minus 1 from this 1 in front. So if k is even, I have 1 minus 1, that's what I have here for k is even, which is 0. When k is odd, I have 1 minus negative 1, which I have here. And that ends up being 2. Our expression has become 0 when k is even and 2 when k is odd. So now I can write the integral as 2 over jk pi when k is odd and 0 when k is even. And we'll highlight this important result. We have dramatically simplified this integral. We go back to the integral from 0 to 1 and follow essentially the same steps. I've written them down here, but won't talk through them in any detail. The idea is that we take the e to the minus j k pi, use Euler's formula to break it up into a cosine and a sine. The sine is 0. The cosine is either 1 or minus 1, depending on whether k is even or odd. And then when we work that out, we get exactly the same result for this integral that we had for the other. That is, when k is odd, this integral is 2 over jk pi. And when k is even, this integral is 0. So we can go back to our original square wave. And we can now say that this guy is going to be 1 half times 2 over jk pi 
plus 2 over j k pi. And this is the case where k is odd. Or it will be 0 when k is even. Summarizing, we get this result. Okay, so I've plotted the c sub k's for different values of k. I've uh, plotted both the magnitude and the phase. Uh, the top plot in red is the magnitude, and you can see that um, the odd-numbered coefficients, so this would be, what, minus 9, 7, minus 5, minus 3, minus 1, and so on. The odd-numbered coefficients are non-zero. The even-numbered coefficients are all zero. Uh, I've also plotted the angles, and you can see that the angle for these C sub k's are all either uh, plus pi over 2 if the k's are negative, or minus pi over 2 if the k's are positive. And what this means is that the c sub k's are entirely, the non-zero ones at least, are entirely imaginary. They're, they don't have any real component. That's a consequence of the fact that the square wave that we looked at is an odd function. Uh, this will end this video. Thanks for watching.